Heart failure is a really um, a descriptive term to describe when the heart is no longer able to keep up with the demands of the body, and that results in fluid buildup. There's two types of heart failure, so there's systolic heart failure and diastolic heart failure. In systolic heart failure, the squeeze function of the heart, or what we call the ejection fraction, um, falls from normal, which is about 55 to 70 percent, to less than 40 percent. And in those patients with systolic heart failure, the inability of the heart to pump blood out of the heart leads to fluid buildup in the, in the body. In diastolic heart failure, the squeeze function is normal, but the heart has gotten stiff over time. I think about this type of heart failure as trying to fill a steel balloon with water. So un, the balloon is unable to stretch to accommodate the water, and unfortunately it backs up and flows over the top, and you get the same result, fluid buildup on the body. So the first thing that I tell patients is that you're not alone. Um, this is a scary diagnosis to receive, but there are more than six million adults walking around with the diagnosis of heart failure in America, and a lot of them are living their lives and feeling well. Although the diagnosis means that you usually have to see your doctor more often, if we work together, you often can live very well with this diagnosis. The most common causes of heart failure are twofold, so coronary artery disease and hypertension. Coronary artery disease describes the, um, the process of plaque buildup in the arteries that feed the heart muscle uh, and therefore lead to damage of the heart. Patients may complain of chest discomfort, shortness of breath, or even been told they've had a heart attack before in the past. Really, regardless of what type of heart failure you have, your doctor is going to want to embark on an investigation to try to determine the underlying cause. If we can find a cause, treating it aggressively is just as important as treating the symptoms of your heart failure. So patients may notice fluid building up in their legs, their belly, or even their lungs. The symptoms they'll complain of are cough, inability to lay flat, shortness of breath at night, abdominal distension, lack of appetite, uh, dizziness, and weight gain. So the most common initial test that patients will get is an ultrasound of the heart, or what we call an echocardiogram or echo. An echo will help decide whether or not you have systolic or diastolic heart failure and give you that number of the ejection fraction. It may also give us a couple of clues as to what the underlying cause for the heart failure is. The remainder of our tests really kind of try to get to the question of do you have coronary artery disease that is playing a role. In that vein, we have things like stress tests, cardiac CT scans, and inv even invasive angiography where we take a look at the arteries directly in order to be able to see if coronary artery disease is something that we need to pay attention for you. So the treatment of heart failure um, really depends on the underlying cause, but by and large, uh, patients can be expected to have prescribed several medications. Some of those medications can help you live longer, and some of those medications can help you feel better. If fluid retention is a problem, you can expect that we will prescribe a diuretic or a water pill, something like furosemide or bunadonide, to try to help remove the fluid from the body. By and large, one of the biggest um, issues with treatment is patient engagement. So we want to make sure that you are taking this diagnosis very seriously and that you know which medications you're taking are for your heart failure and that you're taking them as prescribed. So from my perspective, the lifestyle changes are the most important thing that patients can do. I can prescribe medications, and even if you take them, without the lifestyle changes, we're only really going halfway. So for patients if, who smoke, quitting smoking is going to be one of the most important things you can do. So smoking it damages heart muscle and can lead to signs of heart failure. Regular aerobic activity, so exercise, either walking or jogging or swimming, it all counts, uh, is also going to be important to help strengthen the heart and help you deal with symptoms of heart failure. I tell all my patients I want them to eat a low sodium diet or a low salt diet. We want our heart failure patients to eat less than two grams of salt a day, which can be hard. And that's more than just not adding food, salt to your food. What you want to do is start reading the labels and make sure that you're accounting for all of the salt that's in any food that you eat that's jarred, canned, or boxed, and communicating with your waiters and waitresses when you eat out that you need low sodium options. Weighing yourself is going to be a very important activity that you do at home um, that's going to help us manage your medications and your heart failure. So the weight that you gain by eating tends to happen at about a pound a week. 
If you have weight gain from fluid retention, it's gonna happen much more rapidly. So what patients will notice is they'll gain two to three pounds in a day or five pounds in a week, and that should be a trigger to call your doctor and say, I think I've got fluid retention as a result of your heart failure. The other thing that we want you to keep track at home is your blood pressure. So uh, a lot of times it's helpful for patients to keep a diary, not just of their weights, but of their blood pressures, and to bring those to the office, again, so that we can help manage your medications appropriately. So long term, um, we will hopefully get to a point where you're only seeing us every couple of months. In the short term, often patients will see us quite frequently, even every two weeks while we're adjusting their medications and their water pills or diuretics so that they're feeling better. But a stable heart failure patient can expect to see us about every three to six months. So I would say that the, the risk of heart failure certainly um, is that you can be very sick without uh, paying attention to your symptoms, but that by working closely with your doctor and being engaged in your care, that you can live well with heart failure. I have kind of the top five things that I want patients to do, and that is to take their medications as prescribed and know which ones that you're taking for heart failure. Make sure that you are exercising regularly, eat a low salt diet, weigh yourself every day, and then bring those diaries or logs of the weight and the blood pressure to every appointment so that we can adjust your medications accordingly. I think it could be very scary to come to the doctor and be fearful that maybe you won't get good news, um, but being engaged with your doctor and coming to those appointments are the way that we're going to keep you feeling better or identify when maybe something has changed early on so that we can act. In terms of if you're feeling okay, we want to keep it that way. And so the way to keep it that way is to make sure that you're following up with your appointments. So again, we can make sure nothing is changing in the background that we need to do something about sooner rather than later.